All right, guys, we're in part two of the Udacity React Now degree program. Uh, in this in this review, we are going to talk about uh, three main things. Once One, the live chat help, which is available, I want to say Monday through Saturday, uh, about 7 or 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or 4 p.m. around there. And then there's also we're also going to showcase the project, uh, what, what aspects of React we learned using the project, and then we're also gonna talk about the feedback. One of the things I, I said in my first review, which I'll have a link in the description to what I was expecting out of the nano degree program, was that we were going to get good feedback from people. And I have to say, I, I really do think that they delivered on this. Um, so first and foremost, let's talk about the uh, React Fundamentals course. Now I really consider this entire nano degree program about four different, four to five different courses all in one. So that's how I kind of like to think about this. The first one is React Fundamentals. The second course is React and Redux. The third course is React Native. And then this extracurricular you're going to get in GitHub. That's a fourth course. And then we're going to say these two right here are are uh, the fifth course. And the career personalized feedback, I'm very excited to actually uh, review that aspect down the road as well. Now, uh, today we're talking about React Fundamentals. So the project. The project will teach you the basic aspects of react um, components um, how to get started on an application a lot of the small libraries or modules that you probably wouldn't know existed unless you did a course uh, some things like the sort by which uh, helps you sort items um, alphabetically things like that uh, this is our project right here it's the it's called the my reads application or my reads project essentially what it is is we're we have a database that we can query through a search engine through this plus sign here and let's say we type in something like react it will pull up a bunch of books and then we can go ahead and i don't know we'll take this one and we'll add this one to the currently reading application we jump back to here and you'll see now it is part of our our database uh, and you'll notice when we refresh the page here that will actually persist thanks to local storage so uh, you'll learn about components. You'll learn obviously the the basics of React states, props. You'll learn a lot of. Uh, you'll learn about browser router links. All these things that are pretty crucial to React. And all in all, I think this is a pretty good introduction project, and and one that I could see myself taking something like this and then maybe um, creating a new project that's not that that they didn't help give me some starter code. So essentially what you get when you start this is you basically get a, a hard-coded template. You get a lot of HTML, a lot of CSS, very little JavaScript, and uh, just to get you going, because they're, they're focused on the React aspect, which is kind of cool. Um, now, let's talk about the live chat. Normally, uh, if they're online, there'll be a little thing here. It says click live chat, then you have a message here, and you can ask questions. I did this about three times, and in terms of the quick response time, I was very happy with how, how the quick turnaround. It took me about five to 10 minutes to connect to somebody on chat, although some people said that for them, it took anywhere up to 30 minutes to an hour. I never had that experience. Uh, they did this very quickly in my experience, and most of the time they're pretty helpful. You'll ask some questions. Uh, when I first got this, I was a little intimidated. I said, hey man, um, I'm just a little curious what would be a good path to get started with this this was before i knew that they had a rubric so they send you uh there's this online thing which they break down and let's actually showcase that because uh, i think this is pretty helpful uh, a lot of people struggle getting started on projects and they give you a slight little rubric rubric of the user stories and what to expect essentially your grading criteria i had similar things that were a lot worse in college uh <laughs> so it's uh, documents such as, okay, how should you be able to set up your application when you submit it? Um, what is your main page supposed to do and look like? What is your search page supposed to do and look like? How is your routing supposed to work? And what should we, how should your code functionality be? Um, so all, all these things are very crucial. Now I've submitted my project twice now. The first time I submitted it with small error, it's two small errors, uh, one I knew about and one I didn't notice. and. Um, uh, I submitted it with the one particularly because I wanted to see how detailed they are. I don't want to be able, I don't want to promote something that, um, so far I'm, I'm a huge fan of what I've seen, 
but I don't want to promote something and and say, okay, well, the greatest benefit of the program compared to maybe picking up a $20 course on, on Udemy is the fact that you get that feedback, and it's crucial, right? And I have to say, not only did they catch my error, they gave me a lot of great suggestions in the process. So let me go ahead and show you what you can expect when you submit your application. So the first is the project review. That rubric we just showcased, they go through and give you a check mark. Sometimes they add some, some notes, right? So you're, you're required to uh, attach a readme file. I use Markdown. I have a video showcasing that if you're not familiar with Markdown, but it's basically how you create the readme files in shorthand HTML, but you can do it in HTML as well. A um, uh, little note here that said, hey, check the code review to see how you can improve this. Uh, so go there. Here's where I failed. They said, oh, all right, I met this requirement, but it's not quite perfect. Here are some general, and I, I like that they give you a general direction to go to. Hey, here's the thought process. We're not going to give you the code, right? We're not. I'd be really upset if they, they just copied and pasted some code, but here's a little bit of the thought process, and you should be able to figure it out from here, and I did. Uh, I did the I uh, I I think I fixed both these unless they meant something else, right? Sometimes you you said they send you stuff. People you send in code. Sometimes you say one thing, but it's interpreted another way. But I think I interpreted it right. And then you can see down here, there's another small thing that I messed up. Fix that as well. Um, so I was pretty happy with that. But more than anything else, the code review was what really stood out for me. And uh, you can see right here. Uh, I'm gonna go through each one of these just so you get an idea that in the README they give some nice work like this is good but hey you could add additional things and here's a resource for you to go learn that to go see what are those additional things and they they just send me straight to it which I thought was pretty cool um, they also make a note here like hey it's it's better convention to only have one README you should probably get rid of this and then uh, in our actual application, everything you're seeing here is what I submitted in a zip file. You can submit your projects via Git or a zip file. I just did zip file because um, it's quicker for me, uh, but you can do either one. Now, you'll see here that they have suggestions, uh, which is what we're gonna read right here. Um, just giving me some heads up about, hey, maybe you want to clean this up because it's your main uh, bootstrapping point from uh, your application. Uh, I ignored that for the second thing because I didn't feel the need to create a sort of container application to submit in here. Um, we'll see though if that ends up hurting me down the road. Now here, uh, it it is uh, giving us some some insight on what we should do to not repeat coding practices and stuff like that. Good suggestions. All these are good suggestions regardless. But uh, more than suggestions, I think here it is. You'll see required. So they say, hey. Uh, here is where I think maybe you might want to change some of your logic and same thing here Are you sure you're doing this correctly? Very very detailed in terms of what we think you can approve on and where and then they gave me some more suggestions right here as well, but um, and also um, I was surprised by this, but they also say hey good job for using prop types Which is another thing they go over prop types is kind of a way that you can essentially do TypeScript uh, and set types of your variables, props or something that you pass in to your components. They're essentially um, variables at the end of the day of your component and uh, or properties, is, uh, hence the prop types. And you can set uh, values for that. Now, they also mentioned something called default props, which we didn't touch on, I don't believe. Um, and then more suggestions. But all in all, uh, what I can say is, so I paid $300 for this course and and also, uh, let me, uh, they, I handed this in Saturday and an hour and five minutes later, they sent it back to me, uh, review. Now they, they say they expect 20, give everyone 24 hours, but I can say that I got mine back in an hour and five minutes, which I was very impressed with. I wasn't thinking, I was thinking I wasn't going to get this till Monday. I submitted it on Saturday at noon, got it back by like one Oh five. Um, so I was very impressed by that. Oh, and you can see right here, live help. So maybe people are online. Um, so you can say here the way that live help works you go say hey what's your problem and how have you tried to fix this problem and you can attach files as well and then you uh, click find me and it throws you up in a queue basically so uh, if I what I could say about this is if the rest of this course is 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 uh, oh, also there's a slack channel that was very helpful as well everyone's really helpful with that but 
if the rest of this course goes in the same format, and I imagine it will, just with Redux and React Native and so on and so forth, if you think about it as getting about five to six courses and getting feedback from developers when you submit your project, and again, I got mine back in an hour and five minutes, which is pretty impressive. Um, it is, I think it's a valuable resource. All the videos are very easy to follow along. I'm pretty sure they're all stoned in it, but that's that's another that's another thing altogether. They all they all look like they're pretty lit. Uh, no judgment, it's just an observation. But uh, if you look at it like that, it comes down to about a hundred dollars a course, and I think that is a pretty good deal when you when you consider that you're getting feedback as well as well as help. But I got mine for three hundred uh, on sale. Maybe you can find some some coupons to get it for that. Uh, five hundred dollars for the course, but if the rest of the course goes like this, I'd be very happy with the amount of money I spent. And um, there, but I will also say that I don't think I think you can get a similar experience going through Udacity and getting a couple twenty dollar courses. So instead of spending five hundred, maybe you buy five twenty dollar courses, and you just say, you know what, I don't I don't really care about the 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 project feedback, and that's okay. But I, I do like that's that's probably my number one thing that I like about this is the project feedback is the suggestions. Hey, how can we clean up your code and write it more react style? But I'm very happy with it so far. Anyhow, guys, that's my part two of the review. I will uh, see you guys in part three in which we'll be reviewing react and redux. And uh, we'll do one more for react native. And then of course, we'll do one summarizing everything together. So thank you for watching guys. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share. And if you want to help me out, one thing I'm doing is I'm keeping affiliate links in the description for products that I use, everything I like. Uh, that's courses, that's even um, Humble Bundles, that's investment applications, stuff that I use and that I stand by. And so if you're interested in checking that stuff out, you can help me out that way as well. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsors, Dev Mountain. If you're looking for a coding boot camp where tuition and housing is included, definitely check them out. Appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.